So just a couple of days ago, I posted a video doing a quick comparison between Google's new Bard AI chat and Microsoft's Bing chat. I basically asked them both questions going back and forth and kind of compared and contrasted the way that they went about answering their questions. And honestly, it was very, very interesting to me. I do feel like Bing is actually still a little bit ahead in the sense that Bing will give you sources for everything it's telling you, and it tends to give me more information as well. It's a bit slower than Bard, but there's more information, more details, and sourcing, which is really important because if you just get an answer from one of these chat systems, I need to know where they're getting this information from so I can fact check that myself and make sure this information is accurate. But one thing that I mentioned that Bing was rolling out was image generation. And that is something that Bard obviously does not yet have. So in this video, we are gonna take a look at this image generation and see what it is all about. So we are now in Microsoft Bing. We're gonna go into the chat side of Bing and we're going to click on more creative because that's where you have to be to do the image creation. I think that my dark reader extension is doing weird things with this. We're gonna turn it off on Bing. There we go, that looks much better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the obvious thing. We're gonna say, make me an image of Microsoft Surface Duo on a table. And it is apparently going to use that dolly thing to create that exact image. Your image is being created by AI. This will take a moment, but honestly, from my very brief experimentation, it doesn't take that long. That's not that long at all, although this image is not accurate in the least. Now, this is something that's been true of other things like this. I've tried to use the Dolly Mini to do pictures of Surface Duo, and it has never come out correctly at all either. As you can see here, this is not anything like what a Surface Duo looks like. This is a single screened device. Although I will say that the fidelity of the image is quite nice. So what we're gonna do is we're going to say, you, this is cool, so you have actually suggestions back there. Make it look like an advertisement. What's at a keyboard? What's, what, what is that gonna do? So is it gonna add like a physical keyboard next to it or a keyboard to the screen? I like that it has little things it's going to ask you to add on to it. Change the background color, add a mouse. Okay, so basically it took those prior images and just kind of added a keyboard into the shot. Let's do a new topic because clearly that's not where we're, what we're looking for. One thing I thought about using this for was for colorful backgrounds for thumbnails and things like that. So let's, let's try this. Make a colorful abstract wallpaper. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what I asked for. Okay, and it is 1024 by 1024. So it's not super duper high resolution. But it's also not terrible either. Like that's, you know, you, you can zoom in on that pretty far and it's gonna look okay, I think. And so this is something that I wanted to be able to do with this. So let's copy this image and let's go into, you know, Pixlr where I make my thumbnails and let's paste that in. Could you use that to make your own backgrounds for YouTube thumbnails and things like that? Yeah, absolutely can. Let's get more specific, make a cartoon image of a folding smartphone. Now I may have made a mistake here because it may be trying to use this as context because I didn't start a new topic. No, it didn't, I actually was smart enough to know that. And that's, that's pretty cool. It's not necessarily a folding smartphone, but that's a cartoon of a phone that that's actually pretty cool. Let's, let's see if we can do this, make a cartoon version of the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Will it be smart enough to, to, to make that be recognizable in this image? This should be very interesting. Okay, it really went in a weird direction for this. Very, very strange direction for this. It even it, <laughs> it tried to put text on it that is totally uh, illegible. Okay, uh, make it more realistic. Not what I was expecting. There's some uh, child with his head shoved through the screen. <laughs> okay, uh, so, I mean, that kind of looks like a realistic phone, but then for some reason we have just an image of a person in a, in a face mask. So definitely some weirdness going on there. I wanna try it with the little sidebar thing that pops out now, okay? So let's, let's see what we can do with that. Does it work that way? So we're gonna take a picture of my dog and we're gonna to go to more creative. Is it able to use this as context? Turn this image into a cartoon. Will it actually use this image 
as a starting point. If it will, that would be incredible because I could definitely use this. Okay, it did not. Retry for this page only. It just seemed to make a cartoon, just a generic cartoon. Okay, so that does not work. That's disappointing for me because that would be extremely useful. So I decided to try and use this to make a cartoon avatar for myself. I want to see how close I could get. So I typed to make a cartoon image of a long haired man with glasses and a beard holding a smartphone. And we got this. First off, this is clearly not a cartoon. That is fairly realistic. And I thought, well, this is close. So I said, make the beard shorter because my beard's not very long. So then it made the beard a bit shorter. And I thought, okay, we're getting there. But then I said, we need to make the hair dark brown. And now we are beginning to get somewhere that I think like that's, that's not far off. That's not too bad. That's not far off either. Like we're we're beginning to get someplace. I might actually hold on to that one. Let's see if we can make it even closer. So I tried a couple more different prompts and I really wasn't able to get any closer than that, but that is still pretty cool. And you could totally use that as like a profile picture or something like that. Now, one problem, one thing I'd like to be able to see is like I mentioned earlier, being able to use an image as a starting point, because then you could take this image and plug it back into it and say, now make them holding a tablet. Now make them be at a computer. And you could really use this as an avatar for things like that. And that becomes even more useful, being able to find your way back to that same image again. Like, let's see if I grab that prompt and I plug that prompt back in. Am I able to get this guy again? Or is it gonna give me different versions of this guy. Could I then change that prompt a little bit? You know, the part where it says holding a phone, could I change that prompt and get something that looks like this same guy but doing something different? Because that would really like level up the usefulness of this for me. Yeah, see, I didn't get that same guy again, although you could argue that this is another fairly decent, although, you know, my beard is not as uh, thick, voluminous as these, as these images. So I've looked at a lot of like cartoonish looking stuff. Before we end this video, let's look at something really, you know, as realistic as we can get it and see what this looks like. There's an important lesson. You actually have to type your prompts in correctly. It's only as smart as you are. I mean, <laughs> definitely some issues with this image. <laughs> it's kind of nightmarish, if I'm being honest. These people aren't very realistic at all. These look like androids. Okay, so I rephrased it. I didn't say realistic. Just draw me a man holding a tablet. And I think that this is fairly passable and that does look fairly realistic it's not going to be perfect there is some weird stuff in all of these some slight weird stuff that looks pretty good he's only got he's missing some fingers who needs pinkies anyways they're useless useless fingers this man is more highly evolved he has uh gotten rid of the use of pinkies this individual's hands are going to be a tough thing for these all right so try and keep hands out of the prompts and i think you're going to be better off but still uh, generally speaking, that's okay. What about like, like a landscape? We're getting very specific here from what I want to see from this image. Bing, don't fail me. I mean, that's, it, it pretty much crushed that. That is very, 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 very good. Let's see if we can make it more realistic because this looks like a painting. Let's see if we can get like photo real. Still not super realistic, right? Like it still looks like a painting. So let me try one more prompt. Okay, so evidently, it is giving up on that prompt. Overall, I do think that this is pretty cool and I am probably going to find ways to use this in my thumbnails and for things like that to make interesting backgrounds for my thumbnails. I think that's a potentially really cool use for this for me. So keep your eyes out for that. There are still definitely things that need to be improved. There's weirdness with people, weirdness with hands, and I want to see this thing be able to use my photos as starting points, as context. I want that sidebar to pop out, use what it sees on the screen and use that as context to make the images. That would be really, really cool. And it would allow you to then use images you've already generated as jumping off points as almost like a way to train the model on that image to do more with it. These are things that are gonna be very necessary going forward. But as a first step in this direction, I do think that this is quite cool. And it's obviously something that Google Bard does not yet have. It may be something that it has in very short order, but right now it's something that it simply does not have. I do also need to quickly point out that like a lot of these AI generating things that sometimes they run into some issues like this, where after so many, it told me my image creation was going to take a while because I had, if you go in here, ran out of boosts. You can see here that 
Obviously, it still happened relatively quickly. It was not five minutes. It was only a couple of minutes, but it said it could take a five-minute wait because I was out of boosts. Apparently, these boosts refresh weekly, but you can also use your Microsoft reward points to get five more. So every week, you're going to get a bunch of images you can create. If you create too many, they're going to sort of deprioritize you unless you use your reward points to get reprioritized. So that's definitely something to keep in mind going forward. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.